Humans have been moving plants around the world for many centuries. Recent research has indicated that about 3% of the world's vascular flora have become established uh, and naturalised in new uh, areas outside their, their native range, largely moved around by, by people. What we're realising though now is that some of these plants can become invasive. This is a, a little uh, Calyptranthes. Cordia rupicola here is one we're doing a, quite a lot of work on. And one of my favourites, Acacia anagardensis, originally thought only from the island of Anagarda, and I found it on Fallen Jerusalem a couple of years ago. So Q have been running a, a UK Overseas Territories programme for more than 15 years, providing botanical support for the territories, but particularly we have the collection from the British Virgin Islands under threat from invasive species. Being islands, there's a really interesting uh, flora there, and islands typically have a wide range of plants unique to those islands, and so uh, the British Virgin Islands is no different. Metastelma anagardensi is known from only one island, the island of Anagarda, uh, and it, it occupies an area probably less than 27 square kilometres, and that's its global population. And it's that community that's being invaded now by a range of non-native species. So when it comes to the invasive species, we wouldn't keep those in the living collections, but we've got them here as herbarium specimens. And there's very little difference between the invasives and the endemics. You wouldn't know from looking at the herbarium specimens that, hey, I'm an invasive plant. Uh, it's surprising how few people in many places are aware of the challenge and the, the threats uh, posed by invasive species. <coughs> So here we are at Wakehurst Place, a part of Kew Gardens in the high weald of Sussex. Uh, and what we're doing here is controlling rhododendron, that, that infamous beast that, that's ravaging our native woodlands. Uh, and my colleague James here, who does all of the hard work, uh, is uh, actively removing it using a tried and tested technique, a chainsaw. Uh, we cut it down uh, and then we use herbicide to, to kill the plant. Well, these are sandstones, um, so at Wakehurst Place and in the High Weald we have um, this wonderful geology of sand rock. Uh, and this sand rock provides a wonderful habitat for mosses, for lichens, for liverworts and for ferns. There's some light getting through here so you can see some life, but as we move further into the rhododendron thicket, you'll see it becomes very, very dark. And these rocks are almost devoid of any lower plants growing on them whatsoever. In contrast, here, here we are um, looking at a rock that's uh, really verdant, uh, full of life. Uh, this is Tunbridge filmy fern, a, a very, very rare plant that only grows at a few locations in West Sussex. So this area that we're in has never seen those dense canopies of rhododendron. And that's why this rock is really thriving with these lower plants. And so removing rhododendron from other parts of the estate is absolutely essential. Well, here at Kew, we've got about 30,000 species in our living collections, a product of, of many centuries of plant collections. And they're from all over the world, and some of them have naturalised on our site. Uh, but they're not a problem, because they're not ones that are becoming invasive. And any that do, we now uh, are aware of problems of potential invasion. So we do carry out a risk assessment on all new acquisitions, and anything that looks like it might uh, be invasive will not uh, display. So it's now really beginning to uh, take the central stage in conservation biology that it really needs to uh, before it's too late and we, uh, we hand on an invasive dominated planet quite different to the, uh, the diverse uh, native dominated one that we inherited from our forebearers.